welcome to you, our loyal viewers, and I welcome you to Fronus's Exploring God's Wisdom. I am your humble host, Dineo Molokwane. We will be starting today's episode with Pastor Emmanuel Ibitayo. He is a full-time minister with the Redeemed Christian Church of God. He holds a BA and a Diploma in Theology from the Redeemed Christian Bible College. He holds a higher national diploma in accountancy from the Polytechnic Ibadan. He's the special assistant to the general overseer in charge of Southern African II based in South Africa. Well, I can't state all the points he stated in his previous messages, but I'm glad to tell you that you can catch all our previous episodes on YouTube at Furnaces Africa. You can also follow us on Instagram at 1John54 Media and on Facebook, Furnaces Africa. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. I want to welcome our viewers to this special series with the title victory without a fight. And I have an impression that God is about to fight for somebody, that God will deliver victory unto somebody. There is no sunrise without a night. There is no victory without a fight, naturally speaking. However, when you allow God to do the fighting, victory comes to you without losing any sleep. And that type of victory can be very, very sweet. That is go what God wants to deliver to you today. Now, I want to take note of three things quickly. Number one, God has promised you victory. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. He told him that nobody shall be able to stand before him. And that is also for you. Today, no force shall be able to stand against you. Number two, God has planned victory for you. He has promised it and he has planned it for you. And not only that, God has made provision for your victory. What is victory without a fight? Number one, victory without a fight is a victory without any sweat. Victory without a fight is a victory without any sweat. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. The Almighty God told Jehoshaphat, saying, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. May that one be your story. The Almighty God told him and his people, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Leave everything for me. So, Victory without a fight is a victory without any sweat. Don't give yourself any tension. Don't give yourself any trouble. God is taking over that particular battle in your life. Number two, victory without a fight is a victory without any threat. First Peter chapter 2, from verse 21 to 23. First Peter 2, 21 to 23. The Bible says, for even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Verse 23 says, Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. You see, when you are fighting with somebody and the person is, is saying you are going to see it. No, when you leave your battle in the hand of God, you don't issue any threat. You just leave it in the hand of God and let him fight the battle for you. Victory without fight. That is your portion. Number three, victory without a fight is a victory without any weapon. Naturally, when you want to fight, you go with weapons. You go with ammunitions. 
But when you want to talk of victory without a fight, the one that God will do for you, you don't need any weapon. Because God is doing the fighting and you are taking the victory. Psalm 20 verses 7 and 8, Psalm 20 verses 7 and 8, the Bible says, Some trust in chariots, listen to this very well, and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but in our own case, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. As we call upon the name of the Lord, is going to fight for you this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. You don't need any firearm when the arm of the Lord is with you. Take note of that. You don't need any firearm when the arm of the Lord is with you. Isaiah 51 verse 9, the Bible says, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. The arm of the Lord is with you. You don't need to carry, you don't need to carry any arm. As I close for today, victory without a fight is a victory without any human strategy. Let God be the one to tell you how to fight. He can ask you to begin to praise him, and at the end of the day, your enemies will be disgraced. He can ask you to just, no, don't say anything. Look at what he did in, in Jericho. He asked the children of God to surround that particular place. And by the time they surrounded that place, the last, all they did was to make a shout. And uh, God gave them victory over that place. I decree in the name of our Lord Jesus that the Lord will give you victory without any fight. You have nothing to donate towards your victory, but praise. Keep praising the Lord. The Almighty God is raising you above that challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Greetings, this is Dr. Abraham S. Roger extending an invitation to come join our Bible school. We want to train, equip, activate, and release you into your ministry. We offer a program from first year all the way to PhD level. We are fully correspondent, and our material and our broadcasts are available all over the world. So why waste any further time? Contact us today. And just remember, we are free and waiting to train you, equip, and activate you into the ministry God has in store for you. See you soon at one of our campuses. There's no need for comparison. Be happy with yourself and find satisfaction in your work. Deuteronomy 23 verse 23 says, That which is gone out from your lips you shall keep and perform, even a freewill offering, according as you have vowed unto the Lord your God, which you have promised with your mouth. Thank you, Pastor Ibitayo. We are thoroughly blessed. Act like a king and let your action exhibit dominion. You need to act your position because your dominion is derived from God. Apostle Humphrey Oseni is the president of Voice of the Spirit Ministries, also known as Dominion Life Family Church, based in Johannesburg, South Africa. He is an excellent teacher of God's Word. He travels regularly ministering God's Word in churches, seminars, crusades, and in different nations of the world. Last week, Apostle Humphrey Oseni started series tagged how to live a life of dominion. In his last teaching, he made mention of how to make use of our imagination to enable our faith confession to work. He will continue on the series with another topic tagged walking in dominion. If you enjoyed this teaching from last week's episode, then you can't afford to miss today's teaching. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Hello, I am Apostle Humphrey Ostini. And it's great to be on this broadcast. I'm continuing my series on walking in dominion. Child of God, you can live a life of victory. Struggling, frustration can't stop. No believer is meant to live a life of frustration, a life of praying, 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 and seeing little results. You can come up here to a higher life. The truth of authority is what will radically change your life. When you understand that you have authority, you have power, it must become real to you. That in any situation you know I'm in charge. You see, there's a truth I want to pass across to you today. Jesus Christ walked in authority on earth. But you know what? In his resurrection, he obtained a name above every other name. Which means literally he obtained authority 
above every other authority. And when you are in Christ, you have the same authority. You have been given that authority above every other authority. In his earth work, Jesus, his disciples, didn't have heavenly authority. Even Adam didn't have heavenly authority. But in his resurrection, he not only defeated the devil, stripped of his power, but God gave him authority in the heavenlies. That is why we are seated on God's own throne. I wish that the church could grasp the import, the vitality, the relevance of being seated on that throne. There is no king that ever doubts his words. There is no king that lives a life of weakness or fear. Kings are bold. Kings are confident. Kings know that their words come to pass. And Bible says he has made us kings and priests. Not just ordinary kings. We are seated on the throne of God. I've got authority. I've got power. I like what the man of God who had one of the greatest healing ministries since the, since the days of the apostles, John G. Lake. In fact, if you think you have power. Have you ever closed the hospital? Two hospitals, one in Spokane, Washington, one in Ohio, were closed because he had healing schools just along the same streets with the hospitals. And the miracles were so much that people stopped going to the hospital and started going to John G. Lake's healing schools. And almost everyone that went got healed. Over a hundred thousand people were documented as healed that the mayor had to give John G. Lake uh, an award for the healings that took place in Spokane, Washington. Hallelujah. So child of God, what was his secret? He knew he carried power. He knew he had authority. And if you have that same knowledge, and he taught that anyone that has this knowledge can walk in dominion and authority. Hallelujah. He taught people to do the same things that he did. John Gidek taught ordinary people. And they were called divine healing technicians. And wherever they went, cripples, incurable cases were healed. So, child of God, the secret is understanding authority. The secret is knowing the power that you have in Christ. And that's what I've been trying to teach you. Child of God, you are seated not just a little bit above, far above all, all, every. If it's a demon, you are far above it. If it's a curse, you are far above it. If it's a foundation and altar, you are far above it. And if you are far above, it means you far outrank. They have to obey. They have no choice. Jesus says we have been given power over all. So I don't care. I'm never moved when people come to me and say, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. There is this pattern in my family. There is this problem I have. I'm never faced by it. And the question I usually ask is, is it bigger than God? And if it's bigger than God, we can't help you. But thank God, there's no problem bigger than God. So I've always been able to minister to people and see them experience total deliverance. There is no condition you bring to me that faces me. And child of God, if you know your authority, there should be no circumstance that you're facing that gets you afraid, that gets you worried, that gets you depressed. Christians worry because they don't have a revelation of their authority. The moment you know your authority and how much God loves you, worry will fly out of the window. There was a time that God told me, he said, the certainty of victory eradicates fear. I love that. That was a powerful revelation God gave me. He said, the certainty of victory eradicates fear. If you are in debt and they want to throw you out of your house, take your car, take all your property, you owe in the bank so much money, and suddenly you get good news that your uncle, your father, your best friend has just got a contract with Bill Gates worth a billion dollars. And you know that person loves you so much. The moment you hear that, you'll not be worried about your, about your expenses anymore. You'll not be worried about being thrown out anymore. Why? Because you know that the provision is available. Hallelujah. So the problem is not the problem. The problem is ignorance. The problem is not having a revelation of your power and authority. The problem is not having a revelation of how much God loves you. So I, I always advise Christians, meditate on the love of God. Meditate on the power that you carry. Let it fill your heart and mind at every moment. When the thought of that problem comes up, say, I'm bigger than it because I'm seated with Jesus. Say, I'm bigger than this. This thing must crumble. This thing must, must bow to me because I'm seated with Jesus. I'm far above this problem. I'm far above this situation. I will speak and things will change. Child of God, it's your time to win. It's your time to reign, but you've got to take your focus off your weaknesses, of how big the problem is, how big the mountains are, how impossible it looks, and take your focus on the truth of God's word. That I'm seated. I am seated. You got to, I say it every day to myself. I'm seated far above. Principal and past. I say it every day to myself. I've got favor. Good things come my way all the time. Child of God, you can live this life of victory. 
You can live this life of success. You are destined to reign. I tell you, go back over these teachings and you will see what God will do in your life. You live a life of a faith giant and no storm can ever stop you. Your ignorance of the greatness deposited in you will deprive you of fulfilling destiny. Matthew 16 verse 19 says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of God. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I believe so much in the promises of the Lord and He said, he has given us the key to bind and to loose. What are you waiting for as a Christian? Start using your authority over that difficult situation. Thank you, Apostle Humphrey Oseni. We appreciate the anointing on your life. To round up today's episode is Pastor Paul Amoko of Kingdom Restoration International Ministries based in Accra, Ghana. He is an apostle, prophet, and teacher of God's word with a mandate to teach people how to occupy their place in God's kingdom. His ministry touches on dominion, worship, leadership with a strong focus on the marketplace. He rounded up on this topic of kingdom giving in his last teaching where he emphasized on the benefit of giving. We all need a mentor who will support and encourage us to reach for higher goals and to take the next step and to push us to success. Today we will be starting a new series tagged Mentoring in the Kingdom. I believe this is going to be another life-changing message. I will join you right after this message. Thank you once again for tuning in. We so much cherish the fact that you are watching this broadcast. I want to share today about mentoring in the kingdom. Mentoring in the kingdom. Mentoring in the kingdom. And I read from Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, the verse 19. The Bible says, For the earnest expectation of the Creator, waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Other translations is for the earnest expectation of all creation awaits the manifestation of the sons, the matured sons of God. In John chapter 1, the verse 12, the Bible says, as many as believed on his name, he gave the authority, the power to become sons of God. That one refers more to children, but this one refers to matured children, sons, in Romans chapter 8, verse 19. It means the children of God who have been groomed, mentored, raised, and matured. The second scripture I will read from, which I'll be making references to, is in 1 Kings chapter 19, the verse 15 and 16. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you come, you will anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your stead. So God is speaking to Elijah and he gives him specific instructions that you will find Hazael, anoint him to be king over Syria. Jehu, anoint him to be king over Israel. And then you will find Elisha. He said, anoint Elisha to be a prophet in your stead. One thing must be gotten clearly. In this life, every person needs to be mentored, needs to be raised. Until you are mentored, you are not ready to reign. You are not ready to rule. Until you are trained, you can't reign. Mentoring talks about training, talks about being deliberately prepared. And in this life, you ought to be deliberately prepared. Somebody ought to hold your hand and teach you where to go, where not to go. You might have many people who will teach you, but not necessarily mentor you. Because the mentor is interested in the outcome, ensuring that it's not just that you will pass an exam and leave a class, 
but your total outcome in the future. God teaches that the earnest expectation of all creation is to see the manifestation of the trained, groomed, mentored children of God. Children of God who know who they are in Christ. Children of God who know what God has made them and the responsibility that God has for them on this earth. The whole creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. If you understand it that way, you will realize that all that God has been taking you through since you got born again was to groom you, to mentor you, including your difficulties. Unfortunately, I have to tell you that the difficulties you go through are part of the training that God has given you. Those times when you felt your prayer was not answered and therefore you had to fast and pray the more was all part of the training. Because God is not handing to us crowns on silver platter. He wants to ensure that we truly have been groomed and raised, understanding the tenets of the faith, so that we will now hand over to generations after us if Christ tarries. Mentoring is part of the program that God takes us through. And in every sphere of life, there is mentoring. Whether it happens to be you being a wife or being a husband, a father or a mother, a pastor, a business person, there is mentoring. God will always bring you people who hold your hand and help you. Because when they hold your hand, you will avoid a lot of mistakes, including the mistakes that they themselves found themselves in. From 1 Kings chapter 19, we found the prophet Elijah giving instructions by God. And God said, go find these three people, Hazel, Jehu, and Elisha. Anoint them for specific tasks. Now my focus is going to be on Elisha. For the others, he went and anointed them because they were in some level of leadership politically and in the military. But for Elisha, he was a businessman knowing nothing about the prophetic. So when Elijah went, there is no scriptural reference that Elijah actually anointed him directly. That is why you need to follow this teaching. Because in the next part, I'll break it down further. It's important that even if we have heard from God, we will not rush. Because training is always necessary. Preparation can never be underestimated. It is said that if you fail to prepare, then you have prepared to fail. Elijah did not go anointing Elisha and say, from today you are a prophet. But the Bible said he cast upon him his mantle. That mantle was not a mantle to perform. It's a mantle for responsibility. I wish to end here for now because you ought to follow this teaching and ensure you get the entire thing. But get this straight. Any time you get the privilege of a responsibility handed over to you, I want you to understand that you are being prepared to reign. Now, I want you to go back to work the coming week and ensure, or any time you go to work and you're given a job, ensure that you are so joyful for the opportunity and grab it with two hands and go at it because that is the path to carrying the real mantle of responsibility to be great. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh. Hello everybody, this is Pastor Abraham. And this is Pastor Hepzibah. We want to have an opportunity to be able to sow a free ebook in your life. So why don't you send us an email on the details below? We want to sow into your growth with God. So hurry, send us an email now. That's right. And remember, we're on the corner of Elant and Cherry Street in Randburg. And we hope to see you in one of our dynamic services. See you soon. A mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says, He who walks with the wise man will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. It is extremely important to have a mentor, which we will pattern live after. The pain of regret is far worse than the pain of death.
interested. We really appreciate the word of life and we will look forward to the continuation part next week. We have come to the end of this week's episode, but don't worry, we will be back once again next week with another great set of men of God who will be providing us with practical wisdom from the Word of God. I am your humble host, Dineo Molokwani, and this show is produced for you by 1John54 Media. Until next time, keep shedding light.